Welcome to what we're calling the ultimate edit of our Rockingham video. The reason we sometimes recreate our videos is that we sometimes reshoot stuff and we've built up more and more footage over the years and eventually we get to a point where we want to update some of our footage as well as show you some of the older video clips that we have. Rockingham is a bit of a special place for me personally because I did the last two years of high school here. I always loved the place and although I moved away I did want to come back here to live out the final years of my life. So we moved back in 2010. It's a great place to live because it's right on the coast, there's a lot to see and do here, but it doesn't have the really busy feel that Perth has. Although Rockingham is certainly growing very fast these days, it still retains its laid back feel for most of the time. Of course it's very attractive to people from Perth because it's only 50 kilometers away, about a 45 minute drive. So many people do come down here for the weekend and for their holidays. The original plan for the Rockingham area was to become part of Thomas Peel's settlement. Unfortunately, Peel arrived late and lost access to his land grants. Peel's attempted settlement of the area can best be described as a venture of disastrous proportions. Originally, a land grant of 100,000 acres was made, providing that Peel and his settlers arrived by November the 1st, 1829. The voyage was beset by problems, and Peel arrived six weeks late. The governor, James Sterling, informed Peel that the grant was now void. Peel threatened he would return to England with all his settlers, so Sterling came to a compromise, as the colony was in desperate need of new settlers. Peel and his people were dumped on the coastline somewhere around the vicinity of Woodman Point. When the ship Rockingham arrived, without funds that were supposed to have been sent, she arrived in the middle of the first storm of the season and was driven aground at Mangles Bay. The Rockingham was a 423-ton tea clipper, and it's the name of the ship that graces the area today. Much later, when the timber industry began to thrive in areas like Serpentine and Jaredale, a railway was constructed down to the coast, and a port was established at Rockingham for the export of the cut timber.
if you drive north along the coast from Rockingham Beach, you'll reach Quinana Beach, and it's the last main public beach before you reach the heavy industrial zone that stretches almost all the way to Fremantle. You'll notice that the large concrete groin at Quinana Beach has a shape very similar to a ship. This didn't happen by accident. It was in fact the wreck of the SS Quinana, and of course, that's what the area was named after. You'll note that the first couple of shots of Quinana Beach show a jetty sticking out from the old wreck site. Unfortunately, it was damaged in a large storm and was eventually removed completely, much to the annoyance of local fishermen. A few years back, Quinana Beach was redeveloped, and the area that used to be a large car park is now a nice grassed area with barbecues, seats and tables. The caravan park that's located next to the large CBH grain terminal used to be there for the use of workers at the terminal. It was later made available for the general public and today is the only beachfront caravan park in the Rockingham area. The old Palm Beach jetty that was once a navy pier back around the time of the Second World War was replaced by a new structure. It's always been a really popular place for people to come down and throw a line in to see what they can catch. Rockingham is a fantastic place for all sorts of water activities. We've got our own little dinghy, so we go crabbing and fishing as often as we possibly can. Of course, fishing isn't the only water activity. There's also things like jet skiing, kite surfing, surf skiing, kayaking and sailing, just to name a few.
beautiful reserve at Point Perrin has become a contentious area recently. Proposals for canal developments and housing and a marina have caused a lot of trouble locally. People have been fighting over this issue for years. It seems at the moment that the whole idea has been put on the back burner, hopefully indefinitely. Although it's obvious that Rockingham is in desperate need of a marina, as evidenced by all the wrecked boats every time there's a storm, a canal development is not really what we want for this area. And it would really ruin the laid-back feel of Point Perrin, which should be developed and kept as a reserve. As you head south from Point Perrin, you pass an area known as Shoalwater. This is so named for the shoals and islands that are located just off the coast. The most famous of these is Penguin Island. Penguin Island is accessible either by private boat or by catching a commercial ferry. Some people attempt to walk across the sandbar, but this is most unwise, and some people have been washed off and drowned in the past. There is a colony of little penguins there, and most of the time you wouldn't even be aware of them. A visitor centre has been constructed on the island where people can go and actually get a close-up view of these little birds. The island is a haven for all sorts of birds, and walkways are constructed so that people can have a wander around. It's very important to stay on the walkways and not disturb the birds, as a lot of the time they are either nesting or breeding.
Just to the north of Penguin Island is Seal Island. Probably should have been called Sea Lion Island, as it's home to a number of bachelor sea lions. They spend most of their time resting out on the beach, and for that reason nobody is allowed to actually land on the island. There are markers located just off the beach to show boats how close they can get. Every couple of years the male sea lions swim north to visit the females up in Lancelin.